Former employee is brewing up controversy for Starbucks Canada now. The class action lawsuit claims store managers were unfairly exempt from overtime pay for work in excess of 44 hours per week. Now listen to this. The suit is seeking upwards of $60 million in damages on behalf of all current and former managers at Ontario Starbucks locations going back to October of 2014. A spokesperson for the Starbucks company says it will respond to the allegations in court. It's all about overtime. We want to ask the question, what are your rights when working overtime? What if you're a manager? Do you qualify? When don't you qualify? The man with the answer is always in the know employment lawyer, Alex Luciferro, partner at Sanfiro to Mark and LLP. Alex, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Leslie. Is this $60 million class action, does it have any legs? Well, it may very well, uh, Leslie. The proof's obviously going to be in the pudding, meaning these managerial employees, generally speaking, managers, true managers, aren't entitled to overtime pay. It's actually one of the rare exceptions to employees being award overtime pay. Uh, there are other rare exceptions, such as professionals, IT professionals, you know, lawyers, doctors, um, etc. Generally speaking, employees in Ontario are going to be owed overtime pay, meaning time and a half pay for anything over and above 44 hours a week. Um, and so the real question when it comes to these Starbucks managers is whether they were performing managerial duties or not during their overtime hours. Doesn't their salary... And to put it, to yeah. put it simply, yeah. um, uh, if they were performing managerial duties, scheduling, overseeing staff, all the typical managerial duties that you can think of that a manager does, if they were performing those kinds of duties during that time, they would be exempt from overtime pay. They wouldn't be owed overtime pay. If, however, they're doing regular employee duties, manning the till, making coffee, stocking, whatever, you, you know, whatever regular employees would be doing in a Starbucks coffee shop, then they would be owed uh, that overtime pay. And going back years, that amount may very well be significant. Okay, two questions. First of all, aren't managers usually paid more than the regular employees? Therefore, isn't that the defense for the company? You're already paid more, number one. And number two, don't managers pitch in and maybe help out when it's busy? And isn't that part of the job as well? Yeah, interesting points, Leslie. So number one, it doesn't actually matter what you're paid or how you're paid, meaning you could be a salaried employee, you can be an hourly rate employee, and you could be earning minimum wage or six figures. Uh, the law will apply to those individuals in the same way. Overtime will apply to those individuals in the same way. So it doesn't actually matter how much you're making. Uh, when it comes to you know, managers helping out, actually that is an exception in the sense that if as a manager you're very rarely or occasionally helping your employees with those non-managerial duties, again, if it's rare that you're doing that, then you wouldn't be owed overtime pay for that kind of work. But if it's become a regular part of your duties as a manager to do that non-managerial work. And that's what we're hearing, Leslie, from Starbucks employees. We're hearing that, you know, on a regular basis, they had to uh, man the cash. On a regular basis, they had to make coffee. If that's the case, if it's not an exceptional circumstance, then they will be owed overtime for those hours. Do the rules apply to every profession? They don't. Like I said, there are some exceptions. For example, professionals like IT professionals, yeah. uh, lawyers, doctors, dentists, etc. Those kinds of uh, professions are exempt from overtime pay. So those individuals will not receive overtime pay. And managers and supervisors as well. Again, that is an exception, except only if they are actually truly managers in the real sense of the word. You know, a sales manager or an account manager uh, may not you know, qualify as that exemption, they may be a regular employee despite manager being in their title. So it sounds like the retail sector primarily here, and that's a lot of stores and a lot of managers potentially if they get, if they get the go-ahead for this. That's right, and, and they're, it's often misclassified by I employers who you know, will call someone a store manager or call someone a, you know, a manager, but again, if those duties aren't necessarily managerial, those employees will definitely be owed overtime. This also encourages managers to start doing some of the work of employee, or discourages them from actually helping out on, on the assembly line, so to speak, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it certainly does, or at the very least, if they're going to have to do that, they should be treated as those other employees are, and again, receive that overtime pay. So it really shouldn't fall on the manager to have to decide, you, you know, uh, should I help out or should I not help out? That should be your employer as a whole, with that managerial team and with your employees, deciding, okay, well, what's the best strategy here to make sure that uh, that we're efficient and functional and profitable? 
And then employees have to be treated accordingly in, in the eyes of the law with respect to what they're earning and what they're paid. That responsibility always is going to fall on the employer. This is one to watch for sure. Alex Luciferro, thanks for the insight. Employment lawyer, partner, Semfura Tamarkin, LLP. Thanks, Alex.